When I see good code, I like to share it. I've done it in the past and you guys seem to really enjoy it as well. I think it's one of the best ways to really level up your web development skills. Looking at projects that have good implementations, clean code, learning from that and implementing that into your own projects. Today, I've got a really good one for you. It has a lot of clean implementations I want to go through with you and talk about why I think they're so good, why they make sense in your own apps and also what is not so perfect about this repository. No code is perfect, not yours, not mine and not this repository either. So let's talk about what I think is really good, what makes sense to implement and what does not make sense to implement into your own apps so you can learn from both what this repository does really well and what it doesn't do well to leverage both sites and learn even more. This is it. And not only can you look through the repository and see exactly how things are built, but there's actually a deployed version as well that you can preview in the web. So you can see basically what this is. It's called Skate Shop, the repository. And well, it's a shop that's meant for mainly skateboards and configuring your own skateboards. But they've got a couple of really cool things that I want to highlight. The first thing I really enjoy is the UI. This is built with ShadCN UI. You can see that in the source directory. And then if you go into any page that we have in this app, for example, let's navigate into the auth and then the sign in. By the way, I'm going to get to the auth in a second. It's one of the best things about this repository. Um, you can see the UI components that we're making use of. And let me zoom in. So if you're on mobile, you can see it easier. For example, the card right here, it comes from a custom component and that is from UI card. And if you know this pattern or this UI library that they're using under the hood, it's Shadzi and UI, a reusable component library that you can style yourself and just makes a website look really good out of the box. It has this typical style. So if that's a UI library you want to get into, and I really recommend it because it's really good, um, you can see how the proper implementations work of that in this repository. Then one of the best things about this repository is the authentication flow. It's really well done. I'm going to click on the sign in button and we can see a fully fledged sign in screen right here. Now, very important to notice, this is not done using next auth, but an external provider that is named clerk that allows you, for example, to send um, um, emails out of the box with reset password and email verification and two factor authentication and so on that makes this very easy and also a login with credentials which next auth itself does not recommend generally i personally also use clerk in my projects this is not sponsored i think it rapidly increases development time um, and decreases the time it takes you to roll out a product and if you want to see how this is done under the hood let's for example take a look at the um, sign in file so we can navigate into the auth and then the the page we're currently on. This is the sign in page. Let's navigate to that. And you can see there's also a reset password and everything. If you want to take a look at how proper authentication is done in modern web apps, again, using a third party provider, um, this is how you do it. I looked through the code, it's really well done. And part of it, I'm even now using into my own app because the creator of this repository has done a very thorough and good job at implementing that. For example, how they split stuff into components is very elegantly done. We've got, let's look at the imports, a different sign in for the OAuth providers. So those are gonna be, let's move this into a side-by-side -side view to see this easier. The OAuth providers are these ones right here, Google, Facebook, and Apple. This is a separate component. Then we've got the actual sign in form that involves the email and password as another client component and then the shell that holds all this information together that we can reuse across the sign in sign up and the reset password and so on so this is really well done in terms of reusability of the single components and not only that also the server client architecture i think is really well done the main page is a server component as it's mostly intended by Next.js. That's how you usually do it, where you can define the metadata and fetch data from your database as an async component if you need to. In this case, we don't need to do that. And then the components that demand client-side interactivity, like the OAuth sign-in in this case, or the sign-in form that demands user input, those are rendered as client components separately um, right here. And then how they structure the components, I think is really well done as well. Let's navigate into the source and then components. As you can see, there's an auth folder, a forms, layouts, and UI. I think the structure is really good and uh, a bit more advanced. Like this is more for complex applications that have a lot of stuff. If you're just doing a very simple portfolio, chances are you don't need a folder structure this advanced, but we can see all the UI components, mostly from ShadCN UI 
in this components folder slash UI, and then all the auth related components right here. So the log out button, the OAuth sign in buttons, these right here, and the um, single sign on callback is also inside of the components. And then the forms contain all we need for, for example, the reset password, this is a form, or the email and password, this is a form as well. We can see there are a bunch of forms and this is actively being maintained 20 hours ago. So this really is using the most modern tech. Is that always suitable for production? Probably not, but is it really good to get a great understanding of how modern web development is evolving? I think it is. Let's go into the signinform.tsx. Now the naming of these components throughout the entire application do not match the React conventions on how you call file names, but you don't always have to follow best practices. Um, you can do whatever you want pretty much. And I think this is perfectly readable. So that's no problem at all. And we can see the provider right here. It's called Clerk. This is what's doing the authentication itself. So we don't have to worry about all the security implications that come with maintaining passwords on our servers. And we have a dependency called React Hook Form. Let's look at how they implemented the form. There's a bunch of components we are importing here because I think it's really well done. For example, we are enforcing a certain schema client side. This is what I talk about a lot on this channel. Um, we do the server side, of course, because we can never trust client input. But when I enter wrong information here on the client side and click sign in, this is what's happening under the hood. These values are checked with this schema, the auth schema, which looks like this. If we navigate into the auth right here, we can see we need a password with a minimum length of eight with a maximum length of a hundred that matches a certain regular expression. And we are enforcing this one on the client side and then two on the server side. So on both sides to ensure whatever data we get on the server is what we actually expect and it matches our security requirements. So if we go back right here, we can see an email and a password. And if these do not match, the validation that this person has created that I also do in my um, apps. This is a really good idea in terms of app security, by the way. In that case, we're gonna get error messages that are really well done in terms of user experience. They tell us exactly what is wrong. Now in a real world scenario, I think this regex for passwords would be a bit much like one uppercase, one lowercase in number, special character. This is not what I would enforce in my personal production apps, but if you want to make it really secure, but also kind of piss off users, that's what you can enforce in your app. So we write validations to validate this user input. That is validated client side right here with React hook form. And then when that is submitted to our server or in our case to Clark, but normally this would also go to your server. In that case, we can also validate this with the same validation on the server side to make sure this is valid input. Let's briefly take a look at the form itself. It's implemented using a new component from ChatCNUI that is the form. And I don't wanna get into this in too much detail, but just take a look at how this looks. I think it looks really clean with the control, the name, and then the render, what we are rendering out in the field. Just take a look, you don't have to understand everything, but I think this is a really clean implementation of how you can do forms, or at least an example of how you can do this. You don't have to use any custom form component, and you could just use the regular as form that everybody else uses as well. This is really fancy pants implementations, um, but I think if you want to get into more advanced modern web development, it might be worth taking a look at these implementations. There is some other cool stuff in here, like Stripe integrations that you can take a look at. There's a store in store principle, but then on the other hand, there's also some stuff which I personally at least would not recommend if you wanted to roll this out as your own website. Specifically for e-commerce, which this is meant to be the big blank space. This right here, the hero section on your homepage is literally the most valuable space you have in an e-commerce store. And this is using it in the worst way possible with just an image. I would not do that myself. The search bar taking over the entire screen, it's not the most user friendly if users are trying to browse products. The images are not loaded. And if you try to click some items, there's a 404 page. And I'm not saying that to shame this repository at all. I just think there's a bit of room for improvement. Things you can do a little better to make this project even, even better than it currently is. There's a lot of very interesting stuff you can learn from this. One other one that I want to quickly mention is 
take a look at this. If we navigate to a page, you can see the data is being streamed in. That is really good for user experience. That is something you should definitely look into implementing into your own app because the loading, if we navigate to a page, is instantaneous. And only then is the data being streamed in later, as I assume with suspense. There's pagination. You can learn how that is done. And quickly as to see why or how the loading is done, we can navigate into any page. Like for example, the categories, clothing, t-shirts, let's navigate into that right here, categories. And then we can see this is how it's done with Next.js. When you create a loading.tsx, which is a reserved file name, let's see what's in here. And there's a loading product, which is a um, you know custom component or something. And this component defines the instantaneous result, what is displayed when you navigate to a page. And normally in Next.js 13, these are also cached. You can define that however you want. For example, this does not cache. If I navigate to the same page twice, you can see everything is being reloaded. In terms of performance, that might not be the best idea, but the instantaneous loading states that I just wanted to show you with the loading.tsx are really well done. And it's a really easy implementation for your own app that massively benefits the user experience. I hope you learned just as much from this repo as I did. I think the clean implementations make a lot of sense, but not everything in this repo is perfect as we talked about. Big shout out to you on the screen right here. I'm not gonna even pronounce the name because I probably butcher it. No idea where you're from, but just my respect for writing this code. I think you've done a great job. That said, that's gonna be it for me for this video. I hope you learned a lot and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.